Made it to Dublin. So we need to check in, we need to get some coffee, and then we will show you around. Staying in the Clarence, which is nicer than where we usually stay, but it is our honeymoon. The cost to stay here was around $200 per night. And next to the Clarence is a coffee shop called Dime. We went there and it was great. Now let's begin to explore the city. Oh, this is the River Lifey, which runs through the city and provides for some awesome scenery. We then walked by the O'Connell Monument for Daniel O'Connell, who was known as a liberator. We then tried to stop by Lemon Jelly, but the line was way too long. We made a stop for food. We were trying to go to the Stator Cafe, but they weren't open, so we went to Joy Cha, which is pretty good. We then stumbled upon the National Leprechaun Museum, which is a privately owned museum dedicated to Irish folklore and mythology. We didn't go in, but you may want to. Grafton Street is one of the two principal shopping areas in Dublin. We made it to St. Stephen Green's Park, or just Green Park. St. Stephen's Green, there's no park. It's just St. Stephen's Green. Is there an S there? No. You have a lot of benches, you have some water, there are some duck and geese, you even have some seagulls in the air. On the way here, we passed through Grafton Street, which was a busy shopping area. There were people playing music. The street runs from St. Stephen's Green in the south to College Green in the north. Next up is Trinity College, which was founded in 1592 by Queen Elizabeth I. The college was modeled after universities like Oxford and Cambridge, but because there was only one college ever established, you can call it Trinity College or the University of Dublin. Made into Trinity College, which is really cool campus and one of the main universities here in the city of Dublin. One of the cool things that we did not do was to check out the library and to also see the Book of Kells. We didn't check them out because of time constraints, but they did seem cool. Tickets to get in cost 18.5 euros or about 20 US dollars. The Bell Tower is one of the most iconic landmarks and was donated by then Archbishop of this place. With the flight over, we were up for more than 24 hours. We took a quick nap. Now we head back out. Uh, we end up going to. Tierra Madre, which was a hole in the wall, a little Italian place. Uh, the food was really good. I would highly recommend it if you're coming to downtown Dublin. We then walked around the city for a bit and ended up at Vintage Cocktail Club, which is a speakeasy and would highly recommend you make reservations. They have cocktails from a variety of different eras and food but we obviously didn't get the food we found the drink to be really good and if you don't believe us well they've won numerous awards so We set out to explore the city again, but had to stop first to grab a coffee. We went to Clement and Pico. We both enjoyed our drinks and went on to our next destination for brunch. Gios can be busy and has a small indoor seating area, but we no problem sitting outside. We then went back to Grafton Street to explore again. 
and all that walking worked up an appetite, so we grabbed a donut because, well, we're in Dublin. dinner we went to Yamanuri which had good sushi and noodles it wasn't the pricier side though then after dinner we called it a night because we had an early morning Take close to my war, which is like a three hour drive coming from Dublin. You then pay to park, um, or to have an entry fee, then you make a five minute walk over, which is what we're doing now, and then you see the cliffs. Hey, the park opens at 9 a.m., and we got here like 9 20. There weren't a lot of people here, which is nice, and that may be because it's it isn't busy season or just because it's so early but and moment later whether there's just a lot of tour buses or not that in 2022 approximately 1.1 million people visited the cliffs of more but when we went nobody was there most people probably arrive from dublin and they take a tour bus but we rented a car and we got there super early Renting a car may not be for everyone because of the small roads, because of the long drive, because you may be driving on the wrong side of the road, but we found the experience to be there super early really nice because you didn't have the crowds. Now it's the first tour bus that has arrived at 10.15. But I can't express enough how peaceful it was to be there with no one else. We also thought it was nice to be able to leave whenever we wanted to because after grabbing a quick snack, we were able to leave and we were only there for about an hour and a half. With the rest of them coming at 10.45. So trying to beat the crowds, get there early. Before heading back to Dublin, we stopped in Galway. Galway is the fourth largest city in Ireland and it's Ireland's most bohemian city and has a rich and full calendar of festivals and events. We tried to stop to get pizza at the Dobros but the line was too long so we continued to wander and stopped in at tummy time instead. We walked around the city a bit more and found it to be very walkable and a charming place and wish we had more time to explore the area. When we got back to Dublin, we went out at night to try and get some food. The area was super busy and we had a hard time getting in anywhere, so we ended up going to Wow Burger for what was a decent burger. But the real highlight was having ice cream at Murphy's, which was really good. And you also get to have a party at Murphy's as well.
We had one last day to continue our food tour and we finally made it into lemon jelly, which was really good. We continued to explore the city because you're able to see cool things like the Christ Church Cathedral, like you see here, which was built in 1028 by a Viking king. You are able to check it out and go inside. You may be wondering how could we make it all the way to Dublin and not go to the Guinness Storehouse, the Jameson Distillery, the Temple Bar. Well, those places were so iconic. I made a whole separate video about that, which is linked up above right here. During this trip, we did briefly leave and we did go to Scotland. We did stay at two different hotels. At the Clarence is a four-star hotel that sits along the River Lyfe. The hotel is located in the Temple Bar neighborhood, which was originally built in 1852, but was bought and refurbished in 1996 by U2 lead singer Bono. We also stayed at the Morgan, which was a four-star hotel as well. We enjoyed our experience at the Morgan better for whatever that's worth. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.